This video is brought to you by That Snazzy iPhone Guy and iRescue.com. To pick up everything to fix your iDevice, go to iRescue.com and use the coupon code SNAZZY to save $5 at checkout. Warning, this video is for reference and education purposes only. By undergoing this repair, you assume full liability for your device. Neither iRescue nor That Snazzy iPhone Guy are to be held accountable for any damage that may occur during the self-installation process. You are performing this repair at your own risk. The first step is to remove the SIM card from the phone itself. By using the SIM ejector tool or a paper clip, remove it from the side of the device. You will then want to power down the device. Do so by holding the power switch and powering off. If you are unable to access the LCD screen as I was, you can hold the top button and the home button simultaneously for about 7 to 8 seconds. Now on the bottom there are two screws and those will need to be removed and set off to the side. Be sure to keep track of them, we don't want to lose them. You're now going to take the back cover and simply slide it up. It will then be able to be pulled directly off from the device. Now it's time to remove the battery from the compartment. You can do this by unscrewing the screw which is attaching the connector to the motherboard. Once you've unscrewed it, place it in a safe location that differs from the screws that you just unscrewed. Try to keep them staggered and separate so that it won't be as difficult to put them back together. You will now be able to remove the connector from the motherboard. You can do so by using a screwdriver or a case opener tool. It is a little bit difficult, but don't worry, it's a little bit resilient. There's not a very high chance that you're going to break it, so don't be worried by popping that off. You'll now notice that there's a little bit of a metal wedge. You'll need to pull that out and place that off with your screws. We'll put that in back later. Now you're going to need to remove the battery itself. It is glued in there, so it may take several trial and error attempts. Don't be worried if it doesn't come out the first time. It will take a little bit of working and nagging, and you shouldn't damage any of the internals. Just be a little bit careful. You're now going to need to remove a plate that is on the side of the device. This plate is covering a connector and this connector attaches both the dock connector and the microphone to the motherboard. So you're going to need to unscrew this. There's two screws. There's a larger one on the right and a smaller one on the left. Uh, don't be too worried about keeping them separate, but you will want to note that when we reassemble it. Just place them in their own selective corner on your table where you're keeping your screws. You can now pull the plate off once both screws have been removed and place that with the screws that you have just removed also. Once you have removed this plate, you will need to remove another plate which is on the top of the device. There are five screws that need to be removed. At the very top of the device, aka the teal one, you will notice that it is significantly longer than the other four screws. However, there are four different varieties of screws and only the orange ones are the same. So please put them all together as we will need to put them into their correct spots once we've finished this procedure. It is going to be a little bit tricky to remove once you've unscrewed it because it is hooked in via the bottom. So if you pull towards you, it will be significantly easier to remove as pictured here. Give it a few shots, you can get it. Now there's five cables you need to remove from the motherboard. The rightmost three will pull down towards you and need not be done in any particular order. Now the left is quite the contrary. You will need to do the furthest left cable first as the one right to the right of it is below it. So do the left one first and then the one right to the right second. Now we need to remove the vibrating motor which is in the top right hand corner of the device. It's held in by two screws. The left one is a lot longer than the right. Stick those in the same spot and then you'll be able to remove the vibrating motor. Place that off to the side with the screws as well. Now if you remember the first plate we moved, the one that was held in by two screws, there was a cable directly underneath that. All you need to do is pop that up with a screwdriver or a case opener tool, and then you'll need to peel the ribbon cable up. Now, as you can see right now, underneath that peeled ribbon cable, there was a screw, and there's one directly opposite of the device as well. They're pretty noticeable. The one that is a little bit tricky to find is the one under the ribbon cable, and you will need to pull the ribbon cable up to do that. Feels like you're gonna break it because it is adhesed to the metal, but fear not, it won't break you're good to go. Now wait before you pull up the speaker. If you check out where my screwdriver is right now, you will see that there is a little diode. 
you need to remove this because this is where the speaker gets its power. If you break this or rip this off, you have the potential of damaging the motherboard or the speaker. So be sure to remove that little stud before you try and pull out the speaker assembly. Then you're good to go. The speaker assembly comes out very easily and place that off to the side with the two screws you removed. Now, if you look about midway down the device by the caution tab where the battery was, you will see that there is a white looking dot and what's underneath that is a screw now that white dot is actually a water sensor so apple can tell if your phone has been dropped in the water when you go to get it replaced so you will need to peel that off remove that don't worry you can stick it back on later by just simply pressing on top of it but then you will see the screw that is revealed underneath and you will just need to reveal that and pull that out by unscrewing it place that off to the side and be sure to keep track of it Now before we can pull the motherboard out, there is one more screw that needs to be removed. It's located right near the vibrate motor and it is a bit of a weird screw. Unfortunately, it cannot be removed with a Phillips screwdriver and you will need to go out and locate a standard jeweler's flathead screwdriver in order to remove this screw. Be careful because the area it's in is a little bit sensitive and you do not want to damage any of the components. Now that all the screws have been removed, you can pull the motherboard out. Just make sure that it doesn't cling to any of the cables, but other than that, it's very easy to remove. Now there are 10 additional screws that need to be removed. There are six that are along the side of the device, which are in red, and those are held with washers also. So there are two parts to that. Don't lose the washers. It reduces friction against the frame. And then there are four or the yellow screws in each of the four corners. They come out pretty easy, but they take a little bit of time. Now we need to separate the glass from the frame. So in order to do this, grab a case opener tool, a credit card also works, and move it along the side of the device in between the plastic and the frame itself. Once you go around the whole thing, you'll notice that it will come out a little bit easier. It is adhesed at some point, so it may be a little bit tricky to get off. Don't worry, just take your time. And the frame will come out very easy. The cables on the back are a little bit finicky, so you need to watch those. Make sure you don't break anything else inside the frame, but those cables are good to go out of that slot. Take your new digitizer and screen combo that you ordered from irescue.com and pull it out of the packaging that they give you. We're now going to fit it back into the frame so that we can put it with the rest of the device. So you're going to feed the cables back the way you got your original glass out through that slot right there. It's going to be a little bit tricky and one thing you're going to want to ensure is that the cable behind the digitizer cable, the one that's on top, is you want to make sure that it goes through all the way and my head gets in the way here, I apologize for that. But you're going to want to make sure that the cable goes all the way through because it is a huge pain in the butt if you accidentally pinch that cable. You also run the risk of ruining the digitizer itself. So ensure that before you screw it in, that screw is to where it needs to be. Now we need to place the 10 screws that were back on, the six with the washers, and the four in each respective corner. Now that our digitizer has been fit, we need to throw the motherboard in there as well. Make sure it's in the right place and not on top of any cables. Make sure it's above the three on the right and below the two on the left. Now we need to screw down the motherboard. There's two screws that need to be done. The weird funky one that we remember we had to do with a Phillips screwdriver and then the one that has the water sensor on top. Once you have screwed the two of those in, we're going to fit the speaker assembly in. If you look at that notch that's on it, that needs to go below the motherboard, but the rest of the speaker needs to go on top of it. It's a bit of a weird angle, but if you saw, I kind of went in with a 45 degree angle and you can push it down to where it needs to go from there. Once you have it fitted in the correct spot, you are going to need to screw it in with the two screws. It doesn't matter which screw you put in which hole because they're both the same length. Just ensure that you tighten them enough, but not enough to strip the screws and or ruin the LCD display below. All right, now we need to pin all the ribbon cables down. First, take the one on the side of the device. Ribbon cables are a little bit finicky, so you just have to try your best to get them in there. They are trial and error oriented. You can try to align them, but honestly, there's not a heck of a lot you can do. You either get it or you don't. So spend a few minutes, kind of look at aligning it up correctly via a side angle. But 
once you get that shoved down in there, it is pretty easy to get those dock connectors down. So we've done this one and it's nice and secure. And now we need to do the five on top. There's the three on the right and the two on the left. Just as we undid them, you can do the three on the right in any particular order. It doesn't matter. I go right to left. However, the way you do it doesn't matter. And then we need to put the other two cables, which are on the left side, back down as well. Remember, the most right one, if you're looking at the device from backwards, is the one that needs to go down first. It is the first and preliminary cable. It also is the bigger one. So the larger, thicker cable is the one that gets pinned down first, and then you move on to the second, lighter one. Now it comes time to place the camera in, put it in its spot, and then safely secure the ribbon cable, which is directly below it. This one is a little bit tougher to get on, but don't worry, give it a few minutes and you'll get it. It is now time to put the back plate on yet again. With this back plate, what you're going to need to do is hook it into the hooks that you probably remember having to deal with the first time. Make sure they're hooked in and make sure that those three cables on the right aren't in the way. Now you'll notice that there are four different types of screws. There's a yellow screw, which is a lot shorter and a lot smaller than all the other ones. I think it's blue threaded and that goes in that spot. The orange ones are the next shortest ones. They're both the same size and put those in the orange one by the camera and the rightmost screw. The red one, and be very careful, this is not the longest one. The teal one is the longest one. If you put the teal one in the red spot, you will crack your LCD. So put the next longest one in the red, and then lastly, the longest in the teal spot. Now we need to affix the side plate. There are two different screw lengths. The longest one goes to the right side. So put the long one and the bigger one on the right, and then the smaller one goes on the left side. Very simple, very easy to do. Now, if you remember that little bracket dude we had, you're just going to stick him down in there and he'll stay nice and easy as long as you hold it. If you let go of the bracket, it may move around while you're trying to affix the battery. Now, as for the battery cable, you're going to want to make sure that none of it sticks out of the outer casing. Ensure that it does stick against the device and stays near the battery. Now, the battery switch is actually kind of difficult to get in. So for that ribbon cable, you do need to ensure that it is in the right spot. But once you are sure that it is aligned correctly, you need to add quite a bit of force in order to get it to stay. You're then gonna take your screwdriver with the screw and screw that back into place. Now take your back cover and set it slightly apart. Now you're going to press downward and re-enclose that. Take your screws and screw the bottom of the phone back up and that's it, you've completed your installation. For checking and troubleshooting, Always be sure to turn the phone on, make a telephone call, go in a dark room and make sure that the ambient light sensors, the proximity sensors, the speakerphone sensors, the LCD and the digitizer all work correctly. Be sure to subscribe, rate and comment and as always, stay snazzy.